Ubel Chimera. This is my Ubel Chimera deck, obviously combining the engines for both the new Ubel cards and the Chimera slash Illusion cards. This deck has a surprising amount of synergy between these two engines, mainly in the form of the fusion materials, with the Chimera fusions needing fiend monsters, which of course all the Ubel monsters are, and in the form of just really good monster negates to shut down your opponent and that's where this deck strength really lies so let's get straight into the deck profile we'll start off with the ubel engine for our monsters we have three copies of samsara regenerating lotus if you've played any ubel at all hang on i'll just open this up if you've played any ubel at all then you know that we need regenerating lotus at three this card is our main starter for the ubel engine with its effect, you can tribute this card to special summon a Ubel monster from your deck, which is just absolutely fantastic, and that will allow us to summon one of our three copies of Spirit of Ubel. Spirit of Ubel is the first Ubel monster that we want to go into. With her effect, when she's summoned, we can add a... We can... Blah, blah. With her effect, when she's summoned, we can add a Ubel spell or trap from our deck to our hand. So that will usually be used to search our Nightmare Pain, or if we already have Nightmare Pain, we can use it to search for Eternal Favorite as well. Next for the Ubels, we of course have two copies of the original Ubel. We only need two copies of her, not three. Um, you won't often go into her, but it is good to have one spare in the deck because there are situations where you can definitely go into two. We have one copy of Ubel Terra Incarnate and one copy of the Ultimate Nightmare. A lot of people don't run the Ultimate Nightmare, the final form, um, because it isn't necessarily needed, but I do find myself going into it more often, you know, enough times to warrant including it in the deck. But otherwise, both you, both the Ultimate Nightmare and Terra Incarnate are dead cards. You definitely don't want to see these in your hand. Um, they do still have some uses combined with Nightmare Pain and Grinder Golem. But yeah, they just you don't actually want to see them. In both cases, with Nightmare Pain and Grinder Golem, any other Ubel card would be a better option to have in your hand. So you really don't want to see these cards, hence why we only run them at one. But they are definitely useful to have in your deck just to keep your Ubel live and on the field. Finally, for the Ubel engine, we have one copy of Geist Grinder Golem. This card is good to have in your graveyard, he's good to have in your hand, and he just sets up the Ubel OTK, which comes up more often than you would think. So it's definitely good to have one copy of this card, but we don't really need any more than that, and he is searchable. Alright, now let's go into our Chimera engine. First off, we have three copies of Mirror Sword Knight. This is um, basically the main opener for the Chimera engine. Well, there's three openers, really, and this is the best one of them. With this card's effect, you can tribute this card to special summon one monster from your deck that mentions Chimera Fusion except Mirror Sword Knight. So you'd use this card to go into your Gazelle, um, who will then search for your Chimera Fusion, which is fantastic. So yeah, you can immediately normal summon this guy and then tribute him to special summon your gazelle. And also, while it's in your graveyard, when your opponent activates a monster effect, while you control Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast, um, you can banish this card from your field or graveyard to negate that effect, which is, again, really, really strong and just fantastic. You, with this card alone, you could shut down your opponent's entire strategy. A lot of decks rely on their normal summon and its effect, so any decks like that, this deck will immediately shut down and almost 100% of the time because of a lot of the time you're going to have this guy on your field or in the graveyard. Next up we have three copies of Gazelle King of Mythical Claws. With Gazelle's effect when he's summoned you can add Chimera Fusion from your deck to your hand so that again makes Gazelle one of our main openers and of course we would and of course we would rather summon him with the effect of Mirror Sword Knight. And finally, we have three copies of Cornfield Codal. This card, again, another one of our openers. Basically, <laughs> all of the um, Chimera monsters in our main deck are all opening monsters, which is fantastic. With Cornfield Codal's effect, you can discard this card from your hand to add one monster that mentions Chimera Fusion from your deck to your hand. So with this card, you can discard him to add your Mirror Sword Knight, then summon your Mirror Sword Knight and tribute that to special summon your Gazelle, who then adds your Chimera Fusion to your hand. And that's basically the gist of the um, Chimera strategy. That's the whole engine right there. So running three of each of these cards, since each of them are starters and are really good, this guy also negates effects that targets when he's in the graveyard, which is also just, it's great, it's fantastic. Um, running three of each of these is definitely a must-have. You don't need to run three of them, but... 
you know, we're happy to see any of them, basically. We're happy to see any of them in our starting hand, even multiple copies, you know, we can have a Cornfield Codal and a Gazelle in our hand because then, you know, you use Cornfield Codal, go into Mirror and a Sword Knight who then summons a Gazelle from your deck, then you have a Gazelle on your field and in your hand you can Chimera Fusion into something else. So that is just really handy to have all, th to have three copies of all three of these monsters. And of course Mirror Sword Knight's negate effect is insane. Finally for the Chimera cards we run one copy of Big Wing Burfamet. Um, this card can be searched with Gazelle, so that makes it decent enough to have. There are also, you know, he, he can come in handy. There are ways to summon him, um, to put him in the graveyard and then summon him out from the graveyard with your uh, uh, Chimera's effect. But this guy doesn't do too much. If he's normal or special summons, you can add a level 4 beast monster um, and or Chimera Fusion from your deck to your hand, so that basically does the same thing as Gazelle, um, but slightly different. The only problem is he's a level 5, so we don't really want to see him in our opening hand. Um, he's not one of our starters, as he does require one tribute. Finally, for our monsters, we of course run three copies of Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, because you gotta do it. Right, going into our spells, to start off with our Ubel spells, we have three copies of Nightmare Pain. We definitely need three copies of this in the deck. Um, this is one of Ubel's main starters, so the starters for Ubel is either Nightmare Pain or your Samsara Regenerating Lotus. Regenerating Lotus is a better option for a starter, um, but since it does use our normal summon, we may use that with our Mirror Sword Knight instead. So having the Nightmare Pain as well to help you destroy Dark Monsters in your hand, so it can destroy your Spirit of Ubel or your regular Ubel to get out the next form, and then it searches for a Ubel card or a monster or a one card that mentions Ubel. So that can search for your um, Geist Grinder Golem, it can search for your Samsara Regenerating, it can search for your Spirit of Ubel if you've used up your normal summon or it can search of course for your eternal favorite and mature chronicle so nightmare pain is one of the best starters in this deck um obviously all of these starters are fantastic but nightmare pain we definitely need that at three it also enables our ubells to deal damage when they attack and forces our opponent to attack ubell which is fantastic next up we run three copies of chimera fusion um this should be obvious it's you know partly a chimera deck chimera fusion is important it does search and it returns itself back to the hand during the graveyard, so running three is not entirely necessary. But then again, there's no downside to seeing this in your hand, so yeah, definitely want to have three of that because getting this is fantastic. Um, if you have this, you may not need to use your normal summon on your Mirror Sword Knight and can then go into your Samsara Regenerating, which is another good benefit of having Chimera Fusion in your hand. Next up, we have three copies of Super Polymerization. Wouldn't be a Ubel deck without three copies of this. You absolutely need three of these. Um, you definitely want to see this in your hand. If you have Super Poly and any Ubel monster, you can just nuke your opponent's entire board. It's fantastic, and they can't even stop it. Uh, next for our spells, we have one copy of Mature Chronicle. We run one of these. This is definitely a good card to have, particularly for its first effect to special summon you Bell from the graveyard. I find myself using that effect more often than any of the other effects, just to keep you Bell alive and on the field. This card is searchable. Um, it can be used to search Super Poly, which is fantastic. It can also be used to search pretty much any card from your deck in two turns, though we never really use that effect since it takes two turns. And of course, it can be used to destroy one card on the field, which is never a bad thing. You can use that to destroy your Ubel to go into the next form and get one in your graveyard to then re-special summon with Eternal Favorite. Or you can use it to get rid of one of your opponent's cards, like their back row especially. Um, yeah, Mature Chronicle definitely has uses, but we don't really want to see more than one of it. We don't want to see it in our hand, we want to search for this card, so only run it at one. Finally, for our spells, we have one copy of Called by the Grave. This card, this deck gets hit really bad by Ash Blossom, so having a Called by the Grave is an absolute must. We need this card. Um, Ash Blossom won't shut down the deck entirely. There can still be things you can do, but she can hit pretty hard if you get hit by it. So having Called by, you gotta have it. If there were, th if we could have three, I would run it at three. Um, but I don't think Nobleman. I don't think um, Cross Out Designator is really the go for this deck, and this deck is already quite full as it is. Um, I'm not a big fan of Cross Out in this deck. I think it's too clunky most of the time, and I often can work past an Ash Blossom, so it's not that big a deal. Um, but three Called by the Grave, I would definitely have, just because it doesn't have any cost. We can fit it in the deck. Um, we could swap out even like one Ash Blossom for another Called by, would be good. Um, or even an eternal favorite since we don't really need two of them, but yeah, call by, definitely need it. 
Right, lastly, let's go into our traps. We of course run two copies of Eternal Favorite. Like I said before, you can run one copy, maybe swap another out for a cross out designator, but I prefer to have two copies because, um, let me just open this up. Because Eternal Favorite's first effect is really, really good. To special summon a Ubel monster that is banished or in your graveyard, that is a fantastic effect. Keep in mind that neither player can activate cards or effect when that monster is special summon, meaning it can't be negated, the summon, but also um, it will stop Spirit of Ubel's effect from activating. However, if you chain this to a card that would destroy Eternal Favorite, then your Spirit of Ubel's effect will still activate. So keep that in mind, that is a very fun combination to do. Um, but the other reason we run Eternal Favorite is because, of course, it acts as a super polymerization. If you control Ubel, that's just the original first form of Ubel, discard one card and send this card to the graveyard to fusion summon a fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from either field as material, including a Ubel monster. So this can go into, um, it does not have to go into our Ubel fusion, though that is generally the best option. It can go into, um, any of our fusion monsters that require, you know, it can basically go into any of our fusion monsters that uses um i think this chimera the illusion beast is the only one that that can't summon simply because you bell can't be used as a material for that so anything else that can use you bell as a material we can go into any of this but again generally when you're super fusioning you're gonna go for the you bell fusion so that's pretty much a must um, the fact that it sends itself to the graveyard is the reason why I like to run two of Eternal Favorite instead of one, as others might do. Um, yeah, I just prefer to have a backup in the deck. We can use one as a super fusion and then search the other to continue using its reborn effect as well. Finally, for the main deck, we have three copies of Infinite Impermanence. This deck's best asset is negation. Monster negation is strong in this deck. Three Infinite Impermanence helps with that effect. Um, we can, you know pretty much set up four negates with this deck. We have Samsara Regenerating Lotus negates monster effects, or rather changes their effect to destroy you, Bell. Mirror Sword Knight negates monster effects even when it's in the graveyard. Um, Cornfield Codal prevents targeting. Ash Blossom and Joy Spring stop searching effect, which again, most opening monsters have searching effects, so this can shut down an opponent's deck as well. And Infinite Impermanence again negates monster effects, so you could potentially set up five negates on your first turn, or at least four, even, no, five isn't even a stretch, you'd need this on the field, this in the graveyard, this in the graveyard, which only requires having Cornfield Codal in your hand, um, and then you have Ash Blossom in your hand, and an Infinite Impermanence either in your hand, or preferably set on your field. You can set up five negates in one turn on your first turn very easily with this deck, or at the very least get two or three negates with this deck, no problem. Um, basically, if you open with Mirror Sword Knight or Cornfield Codal, so like six cards options to open with, you'll have Mirror Sword Knight in the graveyard to negate an effect, which is fantastic. And if you open with Samsara Regenerating, then you can get that in the graveyard, no problem as well. And use Nightmare Pain to destroy Spirit of Ubel, bringing out your original Ubel, and then um, Regenerating Lotus will Special Summon itself, enabling its negation effect. So this deck's negation capability is insane. Plus the ability to fusion on our opponent's turn as well is incredible. Like that is really, really strong and enables some epic plays to just wipe our opponent's entire board. So let's look into our extra deck next. We run two copies of You Bell Das Ewig Liebe Watcher. Uh, running two is good. You want to have two because it can come up. It can definitely come up, but I don't think it has ever come up where I would need three of these. It has come up when I need two though. So this card is the best super poly target in the game. I've said it a hundred times. Fuse one new bell and one or more effect monster on the field. So super poly, wipe all of your opponent's effect monsters, plus one of your new bells, you get this bad boy out and she is fantastic. Her effect is really good, enabling um, hefty amount of damage and can easily OTK with this card alone pretty much. And yeah, it's just really strong, but really the ability to fuse our opponent's entire board, that's incredible. Definitely need two of these. We run one copy of Guardian Chimera. This is a Chimera deck, and Chimera deck works really well with Guardian Chimera. I normally wouldn't run this in a Ubel deck since it uses um, monsters on your field or your hand, so you can't super fusion your opponent's field. But since we also run three copies of Chimera Fusion and not just Super Poly, it is definitely a good card to have. Um, of course, Chimera Fusion can summon it during our opponent's turn as well, and he can wipe out up to three of our opponent's cards or draw up to three cards. It's a really strong card to have. It's fantastic. 
Um, yeah, Guardian Chimera, just really good card in this deck. Next we run one copy of Predator Plant Trif Trifio Veritum. Predator Plant Trifio Veritum. <laughs> Normally you would run a um, Starving Venom Fusion Dragon for this sort of thing, but this deck has a lot of dark monsters. It can very easily get dark monsters to fuse into um, this card, and this requires three rather than two of Starving Venom. If our opponent's running a dark deck, very easy to get this card out. Better to get rid of three of their cards, which is great. You can also just get rid of two since we have a lot of dark monsters. Its ability to negate summons from the extra deck is what I really like about this card and why I think it's a bit better than Starving Venom. Um, also, because this deck already has so many monster negates, we don't really need the Starving Venom. Um, but yeah, it has OTK potential, it can bring itself back from the graveyard, and it can negate summons from the extra deck. What more could you want? Next up to enable more of this card's effect, we also have Predator Plant Draco Stapelia, which can be fused with a fusion monster and a dark monster. So again, if our opponent runs fusion monsters, if they run dark monsters, very easy to summon. If they don't, still easy to summon with this deck. And of course, he can negate activated effects of our opponent's monsters. Next for our Chimera fusions, we have one copy of Chimera the Illusion Beast, one copy of Berthamet the King of... Uh, sorry, Berthamet the Mythical Phantom... Goodness me, that's hard to say. Berthamet, the mythical king of Phantom Beasts. These cards are good for um, attacking and potentially OTKing, but otherwise we don't really use them. And two copies of Chimera, the king of Phantom Beasts. This is our main Chimera fusion. Um, he's the one that you're going to go into on your first turn if you have the Chimera engine set up. He, yeah, you're basically always going to go into this card if you're running this deck. And of course, yeah, he, he just has great effects. Just read them for yourself. This card is insane and really good to go into. Finally, for our fusions, we run one copy of Mud Dragon of the Swamp. Good card. Um, two monsters with the same attribute, different types. That will be like most... Well, a lot of decks that you will come up against will have that um, significance. But also, you know, it, yeah, there's just a lot of options to um, go into Mud Dragon of the Swamp. And he has a good effect. Good super poly target. Love him. Next up, we have one Xyz monster. We run Super Star Slayer Typhon Sky Crisis. This card is a fantastic card, and I am loving it every time, like more and more every time I use it. Um, good to counter Zeus, of course, and just any deck that runs powerful monsters. <clears throat> Finally, we have our Link monsters. We have one copy of McCracker from the Underworld. I like to have this card. I think her effect works really well with you, Bell, being able to special summon a fiend from the graveyard is a really good effect for the Ubel deck and of course can go into our um, Samsara Regenerating which is really good as well. We run one copy of Nightmare Phoenix to take care of back row, one copy of SP Little Knight, she is a really powerful card, um, definitely want to have one of her, she's really great, and one copy of IP Mascarina to go into either your Little Knight or your Phoenix during your opponent's turn. Sometimes you'll end on a board that's not desirable, like you'll have Ubel and a Spirit of Ubel, which may not be the best options to have because Ubel needs a tribute. I generally like to keep Ubel on the field, but depending on what you're going up against, depending on what you're worried about, you may want to link up these two into your um, IP Mascarena in order to go into Little Knight on the next turn. And of course, you'll have Eternal Favorite set up so you can special summon a Ubel from your graveyard, giving you two materials. Um, with Mascarena and the Ubel that you summon, which is definitely not a bad choice, and it gets you a Ubel on your field anyway, which is always good to have. So that is it. That is my um, Chimera Ubel deck. I hope you guys like this deck. If you do, be sure to let me know down in the comments. Leave a like, subscribe, share the deck, etc., etc. Comment, let me know any changes that you would make. Let me know if you try this deck for yourself and how that goes. I think it is a lot of fun and has proven to be very, very powerful. Just being able to set up so many negates so easily is where this deck really shines, and that is just, oh, it's beautiful. Basically, if you go first with this deck, you can very, very easily shut down your opponent's entire strategy, which is just, yeah. I don't need to tell you that that is a really powerful thing to do, and then you even have, like, fusions on your opponent's turn to go into, like, Guardian Chimera and whatnot. It's just, it's fantastic. It's a really strong deck. If you want to see this deck in action, be sure to check out the previous video in which I showcase this deck. I'll leave a card to that above, um, probably at the start of the video as well. But yeah, just check, check the card by clicking the little eye and you'll find that video. But otherwise, thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. My name is Ben Sinkara, and until next time, see ya.